In this video we're going to talk about, well I mean obviously the most important thing in snooker is to be able to pot balls, so I'm going to try and give you a tip on how to you know, see potting angles um, and then we're going to move into cue ball control. Um, obviously you control this, this ball in snooker, the game becomes a lot easier. This is the most important ball on the table, you've got to be able to control that in order to make big breaks, in order to keep perfect position um, and to play snooker well. So we're going to start off this, a, a, a routine I did hours and hours every day when I started playing snooker and, and even into my professional because I just, I feel it's just a, it's a straightforward routine. Um, it's not too difficult and, and it, it keeps your cue ball control sharp. Um, so in terms of the potting, finding a potting angle. So if we were playing this red into this pocket, a decent idea is to come round and position yourself in a straight line behind the red in the pocket and look, try and see where that potting point is, which is there. So if you're going to go back into position, keep your eye on that point, don't take your eyes off it. And then that should bring your stance into the position where you can pot the red. In terms of cue ball control, I'm just going to play a small stun for the pink, so quite low in the cue ball, just a little stun and there's a red in the middle of the table, in the middle of the pocket. When doing this routine, in order to sharpen your cue ball control, it's, it's worth, it's very easy, and, and I've done this, I'm guilty of this as well, a bit lazy, is, is when putting the colour, you know you're going to be in one of these reds. If you want to test yourself, play for a specific one, and then that will sharpen your cue ball control. But in order to play for, say we're going to play for a choice of three reds, and quite often in a frame of snooker you will play for a choice of reds. So we've got one, two, three, so it's just a matter of another stun shot on the pink. Again. Keep that bridge hand low, you're just stunning it, so a little bit above the bottom of the cue ball. No power required, just a little stun. And you can see you've now got a choice of one, two, three reds. You're not going to go for that one, it's a little bit tricky I suppose, but definitely one of these two reds you're perfectly on. And obviously in break building, you've got to play all different kinds of shots. So the first two shots there were stun shots, so it was low in the cue ball. If we're going to play this red, now we're going top spin. So now we're raising the knuckle of the hands. And because it's, there's no power required, and it's quite a, there's not a lot of distance between the red and the cue ball, you can afford to bring your bridge hand in a little bit. Don't be too far away, because if you've got a long bit of cue there, you can see it's, it's, it can deviate slightly. So Go in nice and close, but it's the same cue action, nice and smooth, get the top spin. Now we've left ourselves a little bit higher on the black, so we're going to try and play position for one, two, okay that red's in reserve for a little bit short. The beauty of this lineup routine is if you're a little bit hard you've always got another red and that's why it's a good routine for a beginner. But we're going to play this black of two cushions, so we're going to play with side and a little bit of stun. So the cue ball is going to come off this cushion, right hand side onto this cushion and into the middle of the table for a choice of reds. So a little bit more power, so the bridge hand is a little bit further away from the cue ball, low, right hand side. And we've got perfect position, we've missed the black, so we start again. Always important, any routine, if you want to improve your concentration, your break building, cue ball control, if you miss, start again. Because what happens if you keep playing after you've missed, complacency creeps in and you basically you lose any of the hard work you put in, you're just not going to get any better. So that was a disaster. We only potted three balls there, so start again. Again, stun shot, low on the cue ball. Right, we've got the same black again. So we missed the black thin last time. We hit this knuckle, which generally means you've decelerated going through the cue. It means you've, you've not gone through the cue ball with enough power, enough momentum, when playing with side to get that cue ball to hit the black in the right place. So you've kind of like, not collapsed, but you've kind of like, You've not delivered the cue positively, so let's try again. Let's try and deliver this cue a bit more positively this time. 
We're not learning, are we? <laughs> because I've missed that black twice, I'm going to punish myself and go for it again straight away. So the tip I gave at the start about finding the potting point, because I've missed that black twice, I'm now going to come round and I'm going to have a look at the potting point. I'm right behind the black, the pocket in a straight line. I've got that potting point. I can see it. Concentrate on that. And this time the black is in. Not the best position in the world, but I think I was concentrating more on the pot than the position that time. But it's quite a good tip to, to come round and just give the information to your brain where the potting point is on the black to pot it in the pocket. Sometimes you get down and you know, in a routine like this, you can take the pot for granted, but it's very important to put every bit of effort into the shot. We've left ourselves a tricky red here, so I'm going to play what's sort of known as a stun run through. So the red's too straight to play a hard stun, and it's too much angle to play follow through, which would be top spin of two cushions. So I'm going to try and play a stun with a bit of pace. So middle of the cue ball. And a bit of pace. Managed to stun the cue ball. Didn't quite come far enough. Right, this black is one where you really need to concentrate on the pot and point. So again, I'm going to come round. I'm going to look at the pot. I'm going to look at the black, the pocket, straight line. And I'm not going to take my eyes off that pot. Just concentrate on that potting point that you've picked out and just keep still and the black finds the middle of the pocket. Middle pocket pots can be tricky for some people and I always favour, when you look at the middle pocket from behind, I always favour, because it's a left middle, I favour the right half of the pocket. I don't try and go to the middle, okay the middle of the pocket, they say that's, that's where you should be aiming, but I, I prefer, because we've got this drop the pocket here. If you aim for the right half, then it's going to go in. Because if you aim for the middle of the pocket, any deviation, if it catches this jaw here, it ain't going to go in. So I always try and aim just to the right half of the pocket. This is a top spin shot, so raise the knuckles. Still follow through into the heart of the pocket. Safely in. I used to love middle bag pockets. When I was uh, when I was good, going to go a stun run through here. Again, a stun run through means that we could play the shot, the pink with top spin to follow through for these two reds, but a stun run through allows us to hit the cue ball more positively. So a stun run through means that basically when we put the pink, the cue ball will kind of stop, but there'll be enough, just enough top spin just to carry it forward for the two reds. The middle of the cue ball. You see, just enough momentum to take the cue ball forward for perfect position on the red. Okay, in this uh, little routine so far, we've showed the stun shot. Um, we've showed a stun run through, we've showed a little follow through. The one shot we haven't played so far is a deep screw. Um, so if we want to play for the black here, we're going to put this red in the middle and screw the cue ball off the cushion for perfect position. Now, chalk your cue when you're going to play a screw shot because uh, you don't want to rip a hole in the cloth. Important to be smooth, keep your head still. Cue ball back off the cushion. Well, I mean, we're on the black. If we're being very picky, we've gone a little bit too far, but we can still keep the break going. So black again, let's come round. Let's have a look. I mean, you'll still see the professionals on the TV doing this today, by the way. They'll come round, look at the potting angle, which is incredible to think they, they, they must have potted thousands of blacks off a spot. They know where the black spot is, they know where the pocket is, but it just, as I say, it just sends messages to your brain, confirms that you're in the right place. Top spin, so high bridge.
Another thing when you're playing a routine like this is when you go to play a different positional shot, it's easy when you're just playing stuns that are the cue ball's travelling barely six to, to, to eight inches. But if you're playing one, this one, I've got to be a little bit more power to get up for the reds. When you're doing your feathers, or your waggles, whatever you want to call them, try and, try and feel how hard you're going to hit it when you're doing these feathers back and forward. Try and make yourself comfortable with the shot. Again, this is a, a little bit of an unusual angle, so again, it's worth coming round, having a look at the pot and point, keeping your eyes on it. Playing this with a touch of right hand side here. So a, a good idea here, because I've got one awkward red, um, but we've still got another red on the table is that's obviously in a difficult position. So we've got a chance here to try and move that red away um, by playing the cue ball off this cushion, this cushion. But if we miss the cannon, we're still gonna have a pot on this into that corner pocket, the rest, or even a pot on this one by the blue. So it's a good tip actually, for if you're in a frame of snooker, if you think there's an awkward red and you've got a chance to move it in a way that if you miss the cannon, you're still gonna be at the table, then you should think about that. So we're gonna try and play the, the cannon. Try and move the red out of the way. Well, we just flicked it. But I say, because that red's on the table, we've been a bit lucky there, actually. Our opponent's not going to be happy about that. But uh, yeah, we've still got a red. But we've missed the cannon. We've still got a pot in the black. We can still keep playing. We're losing the cue ball a bit here. This video is about cue ball control and this is actually showing you what happens when you don't keep good control of the cue ball. You leave yourself difficult blacks like this. So important again, reset, find the pot and angle. Keep your eyes on it. The black's in, but unfortunately where the red's ended up, that is end of break. So we've done all right in that little routine. We've probably, we've certainly scored enough points to win the frame, but obviously the object of the game is to, to clear up and win the frame, which we haven't done. So we start again. Practice, learn to control this cue ball and you'll find snooker a lot easier to play and you'll be making big breaks. So again, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and I shall see you guys next time.